G'day everyone. Hello. Uh, Mr. James Dunnan here and today we're talking haploid versus diploid. While it's important to get that right if you want one of these. So let's get stuck in. What noise does a fox make? Ding 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 ding. Okay, welcome. Now, as I said, today's lesson is going to be all about haploid versus diploid, why it's important, and some of the misconceptions that students have when they start to think about it. Okay, so let me introduce you to Jeff. Now, Jeff is a regular male. You know, don't mind his ponytail, he's, he's generally normal. So if we look at every single one of uh, Jeff's cells, he's going to have 46 chromosomes. In every single one of his cells. Wait, I know a few of you are already jumping out of your, at your TVs or your monitors there saying, hey, what about red blood cells? Well, that's right. Not every cell is going to have 46 chromosomes, but provided they've got a nucleus um, and it's a normal cell, they're going to have 46 chromosomes. But we probably shouldn't be looking at it as 46 chromosomes. What we should probably be saying is, Jeff's got 23 pairs. Why is that important to talk about it as... 23 pairs. Well, let's have a look at this for example. So let's say we're talking about eye colour. Along those chromosomes there are genes, and we know that genes code for messenger RNA, transfer RNA, ribosomal RNA, and eventually proteins. Okay, And those proteins generally determine the phenotypes that we see in all organisms. So for example, let's say we've got a gene that codes for eye colour. We could have a gene for hazel eyes, green eyes, brown eyes, or blue eyes. But in actual fact, we actually get two chromosomes that code for, say, eye colour if it's one gene. Okay? One of those chromosomes came from our mother, and the other came from our father. So we actually get two chromosomes for every single gene. And those chromosomes may contain genes that are pretty much identical. They might contain genes that are slightly different a lot different, but they're basically going to still code for the same um, protein and then be the same phenotype. So why is that important? Well, if I show you this chromosome here, we can see that when genes go wrong, we can actually get some different diseases. For example, Huntington's disease, Parkinson's disease, or narcolepsy. So if we just had one chromosome, then any error in a particular gene um, that's it. We're going to see that particular disease. However, because we get two, one from dad, one from mum, we might be able to get a backup helping us out. So yes, we might have Huntington's disease on one of our um, chromosomes, but the other chromosome actually has the healthy gene and it might actually mask the effects of this original chromosome. So it's really good to have that backup system. <coughs> Where does it become a problem? <coughs> Excuse me. Where does that become a problem? Well, it becomes a problem if um, when Jeff here decides to have a child of himself, much like the one that I just had, and probably not going to be as cute, but let's see, he, he has a child. Well, if he's got 46 chromosomes and his beautiful wife here, let's say she has 46 chromosomes. If they just combine their genetic information, they're going to have 92 chromosomes, okay? And that's not going to work. We can see that if we have just one extra chromosome in position 21, we can get Down syndrome. And if we have other um, chromosome disorders or chromosome number changes, we can also get Turner syndrome, and there's a whole range of them. So it's really important that we get a process right where we restore the number, when we combine two people's genetic information, we restore it back to this 46 chromosomes. So what that means is, because we've got 23 pairs, all we're saying is we call that diploid. So we call having 23 pairs diploid. If we were to say only have one pair, so one of the chromosomes from a pair, we would then be called haploid. So we'd have half the number of chromosomes. Okay, so really what we're saying is, do we have both chromosomes? One from mum, one from dad. 
And we call those homologous chromosomes because they contain, as I said, the genes that code for basically the same thing. So diploid, we've got two copies. Haploid, we only have one copy. So all you have to really ask yourself is, does my cell have its homologous pair? So do we have two chromosomes? Are they homologous pairs? Then they're diploid. If they only have one of the homologous pair, even if it's being replicated, so even if it looks like an X or a K, if it's just that one chromosome, it is still haploid. So make sure you ask yourself, does this cell have its homologous pair? No. Haploid? Yes. Diploid. But that's not the only versions that we can get. And I thought it'd be important just to share that we can actually get a whole range. We can get haploid, so we've only got one chromosome. We can get diploid, where we've got two homologous chromosomes. And so we've got, say, two homologous chromosomes one, two homologous chromosomes two, and two homologous chromosome three. We can also get triploid, where we've got three of them, or tetraploid. So they are the more common varieties that you're gonna get. And in fact, you would be thinking, oh, surely they don't occur in humans. Well, they do. Tetraploid um, sets of chromosomes actually occur a lot in heart cells for babies and children, and it slowly um, deteriorates, or not deteriorates, but it slowly changes back to our more diploid scenario as we grow older. So I thought that was a pretty interesting little fact there. So again, why is it important? Well, we want to make sure that when he and his wife decide to have a baby, they want to get their 46 chromosome number down to something that when they combine, it goes back to our original chromosome number. So the way that we do that is using meiosis. So meiosis is the process. So we've got 46 chromosomes, she's got 46 chromosomes, we want to be able to produce cells that can combine and restore that diploid number of 46. So we must have to get to haploid first. So that's the process of meiosis, and I'll be doing a video on that later. So basically, the two of them will have to go through this process of meiosis to create sperm for the male and egg for the female. And the sperm and the egg they both now have 23 chromosomes. So they are haploid. Original cells, 46 chromosomes are diploid. Go through the process of meiosis and form sperm and egg cells. They now drop down to 23 chromosomes and are haploid. Then when we decide to create our embryo, we're going to restore that number back to 46. Okay, when the sperm and egg combine, we're back to our number of 46 and we call that process, process, uh, process fertilization. Okay, so that's the fun part where we get the sperm and then we combine them together to create our uh, zygote or our embryo. Then that's allowed to go on and undergo mitosis and development, and what we end up getting is this developed baby, okay? So just to recap, what is, what's the difference between haploid and diploid? Diploid just means that we've got both homologous chromosomes. They form a pair. We originally got one from dad, we originally got one from mum, we now combine them through fertilization into our embryo, we now have one of each. The minute we don't have one of each, we are now haploid. Half the number of chromosomes. We only have one chromosome of each pair. So, I hope that helped. Uh, if it did, please give the video a, a thumbs up or a like. Um, if you want to see more of my videos, make sure you subscribe. Feel free to share. And uh, I'm going to go back and get stuck into The Bachelor. Catch ya.